the Bill and Scott Cubicle Show with Billy the Kid and Scott Tang. Cubicle Show. Cubicle Show. Cubicle Show. Cubicle Show! It's the Bill and Scott Cubicle Show. Yeah. It's the Bill and Scott Cubicle Show. Yeah. What's up? I'm Scott. And I'm Bill. And this is the, the Bill, Bill and Scott, Scott Cubicle Show. At the number 122. Oh, yeah. The Here reason we are. The reason I was laughing is because I realized we still have this Valentine's Day balloon tied to the mic. And it's just it just draws like a divider between us here. Yes. On the show. So we got a lot of stuff to get to today. We got some Drake talk. He's still continuing to give out money. The Spice Girls are at it. It looks like the rumors are true. We get you your latest Olympic update. And then something fun we're going to do is play some Throwback Thursday stuff. We got a great clip of myself from over 10 years ago. Um, we got some great Throwback Thursday sayings we're going to get into. Talk about Tyga a little bit because it's crazy. But So let's just jump in right away. I've got and, four pieces of paper. That's how you know. This is going to be a good show. Good show, people. 10.32, 28 minutes till 11 o'clock. Let's get it going. Nice time check. (laughs) Drake, he's continuing to give out money. He's out here doing his charitable donation. Is he done filming his music video or is he not not just in the flow of giving out some stuff? I don't think he's done filming his music video, which makes me wonder. I know that at least back in the day when they would shoot music videos, they would have like a one day shoot, like a 24 hour straight shoot. Yeah. And they would just shoot the entire day and two then it would be done. Tops. Yeah, right. Yeah. Maybe like two days of 12 hour shooting. Um, I guess maybe that's not how they're doing it anymore because the only reason I can think of this to keep going is because of the music video. Drake uh, helped out a lady. A Haitian woman named Odalie Perret. I think I'm saying that right. She's a mother of five. Uh, she commutes four hours every day on two buses so that she can work as a maid at a hotel in Miami Beach. So Drake saw this profile of and her. bought her a business? In my business. He decided to oh. treat her to like a spa day, got her a massage, took her out for a nice steak dinner, and gave her a $10,000 shopping spree at the local mall where he showed up to surprise her. You know what might have been better, Drake, if you bought her a car? <laughs> I thought about that. I was like, you know, you know he's I mean, donating to women's shelter, he's paying tuitions, and then he's sending a lady on a shopping yeah. spree. Like, yeah, buy her a car. That says that she has to commute uh, by taking multiple buses. Yeah, I hadn't even thought of that, but you're right. You're right. You could. He could have just gotten her a car. He probably could have gotten a sweet deal because he's Drake. Because I need these materialistic things. Like, a car is actually... I mean, a car's not always a need in life, but, but in this case, I feel like it's a need for her. If she's yeah. got to travel like that to do her job, to support her family and everything, like, Drake, these clothes are going to be worn out in six months anyways. Like, come on Yeah, now, your muscles guy. are just going to tense right back up, so what's the point of getting a massage? You the could have thing- got her a car for, like, $8,000 that yeah. would last her a few years, right. you know what I mean? Get her just like, a nice basic model, give her a few years of insurance payments along with that. What a time. Wow, why didn't you should be Drake's new consultant. He should. Hit me up. But I'll well, be OVO Pank. The question is, why is, like, why Miami? Like, Drake, you, you do know you can go to other cities, right? Like, he's been throwing money around exclusively in Miami. So that's why it, it basically has to be for this music video. I think some people in Albany, New York, would love to get some money from yeah. Drake. I would. That would look good on your good deed resume, Drake. Come on up here where it's cold, where you're used to, because you're from Canada. Yeah. It's probably colder where you're from, so it would be like yeah. summer right now for you. Exactly. Stop by. Come on by, guy. I mean, you don't even have to take me on a $10,000 shopping spree. Just buy me, like... Buy me some Taco Bell. Well, speaking of the two-day shoots and 24-hour shoots, back in the day, MTV did this thing like making the video, and it was so yes. awesome. I love that show. I wish they would bring that back. Speaking that was of really good. That's how Thursday. I know. That's how I know that they would do music videos like that. Oh, it was because so of cool. that show. Uh, last week, we were talking about the Spice Girls possibly reuniting, and we even asked you if you would like to see a Spice Girl reunion. And I don't have the poll off the top of my head, but it was overwhelmingly negative. No, yeah, it was like 70, 70, 80 percent didn't care. This has been a roller coaster of emotion, though. Because now they're saying that the contracts are signed, they're getting ready to go back out on tour, but it seems like there's some conflict within the group. Is this what it is? Well, originally there was a rumor that uh, they were going to go on tour, and I think that started with something that Mel B, Scary Spice, said. Then Victoria Beckham, Posh Spice, last week was like, no, there's not going to be Is Victoria reunion. that Beckham dude's like wife? wife or? Yeah. Okay. She's, yeah. She, uh, Vic, I don't remember. Victoria, um, I don't remember what her maiden name was, but before she was married to him, she was famous, so people... Right. Somebody out there knows what it is. I'm not going to bother looking it up. Anyway, she said that they weren't doing it. Now, this week, I guess Mel B, Scary Spice, the progenitor of this rumor in the first place, um, 
signed some sort of contract that details uh, a reunion. Um, I believe there there are at least two tour dates or locations available in this okay. contract. We don't have all the details, so you don't know who's going to be involved. So the question here is, mm. obviously something's happening. Maybe Victoria Beckham slash Posh Spice is just not going to be along for the ride. Is she pulling the Ginger Spice? Is she pulling the Jerry Hallwell and just saying, you know what, I'm going to bow out of this one, guys. Good luck. They're going to hologram her in? Ooh. Oh, I don't know. She'd have to give them their, the rights to her likeness to do that. 75%, 75% of people said they would not want to see a Spice Girl reunion. Or they actually, more specifically, don't care about it. Yeah. I don't think there's people out there saying, no, no, Spice Girls, don't you get back together. It's more just like, well, why would you? Yeah, I don't get it really at this point in time. But, I mean, as a child of the 90s myself, I think it would be cool. I did, I, you know, when the Spice Girls were popular, I was like 10. So I was back in my, like, ew, Spice Girls, cooties, like, phase back then. You know, Spice so. World was an awesome movie. I said it a couple weeks ago. I'll say it again. And it's only awesome because of that one scene where they had their little tour bus, their Spice Girl bus. And they, like, go and they hop over, I don't know, to London Bridge when it's, like, opening up and there's a gap in it. And the scene that they do literally cuts to a toy car on strings, lifting it up <laughs> over, strange. and they go down. I'm like, wow, that's just so genius. I love this movie. I about... always appreciate a crappy comedy like that. And uh, what's With that? all the back and forth and up and down and espionage and rumors and cloak and dagger business, what if the contract she signed is actually for Spice World 2. What if? we Let's not rule that possibility out because people have said things, people have contradicted things, they've said it's not going to be another Spice Netflix World movie. Netflix just bought the rights. What? Exactly! What? what if it's a Netflix original Spice World sequel? Damn Think it. about it. Consider this. And they need to do another version of that tour bus scene, which is iconic. It's one of the best scenes ever in movies. It's like as groundbreaking <laughs> as the first time sound was debuted with Charlie Chapman and like some old, I don't know, maybe Charlie you Chapman. Know, when the it, talkies but, came out? Yeah, but that, way back in the day. What we need to do at the end of this season is compile all the times you've talked about the Spice World tour bus scene. <laughs> Because it's got to be a solid, like, three minutes it's at this so point. It's so good. I know everybody that watched the movie loves it. So right now we do have a poll, speaking of polls, going on at Jams963 on Twitter. What kind of milk would you rather have? <laughs> Regular milk, chocolate milk, or strawberry milk? I'm laughing because of how funny you find this poll. Where did this come from? Please give us the origins of the milk poll. I don't know. <laughs> He just came in today and said, what kind of milk would you rather have? Yes. Okay. So it was you... in the middle. I was, I was coming up with this, like, rap song, which me and Bill are, <laughs> like, now writing. It's become a, a, a two, two-person two rap a collab. song. collab. Thank you. It's going to be called Bars. It's so, fire. So, anyways, I was just in the zone today. Then, all of a sudden, I was just like, well, what kind of milk would you rather have? Yo, throw, our, throw the little, little Twitter handle graphic up there so they can follow the progression of Bars as it's written. Where is it? Social? Yeah, yeah, follow us because go. we're going back and forth with the bars. But go to at jams963 also and let us know what kind of milk you would drink. Right now, 60% of people say chocolate, 40% say strawberry, and regular milk has the big fat egg. Nobody wants plain. The zero. They want variety. They want to spice up their lives. Right. Also, tonight, before we get into some Olympics and talk about this Tiger stuff and some throwback stuff, uh, tonight, uh, Black Panther officially hits theaters, expected mm. to do extremely well, like $160 million in the opening weekend. Yep. So get out there, check it out, let me know how it is, because I'm not going to go see it until <laughs> next weekend. I'll have a review on Monday. I uh, am, yeah, Monday. I am anti-Marvel opening weekend going. I was going to say, I might not have it Monday because it's President's Day, and then I remember we don't get President's no, Day. Uh, we'll no, be no, here no, for the yeah. cubicles. Oh, show. Uh, so what's some Olympic update here? You're telling me something about this, Sean White? This is really exciting. So everybody thought since Sean White's 31 years old, and it's like they people barely believed he could win this time, um, that he might retire. But he says he wants to come back for the Olympics in 2020. Mm. Think about that for a second because those – are the Summer Olympics in Tokyo. He wants to skateboard. He wants to skateboard. Um, which, if you're not familiar with Derek Comedy, it was uh, Donald Glover, a.k.a. Childish Gambino, in a little skit where he poops his pants, which is what I was just referencing. So if you've ever seen that, good on you. If you haven't, go look it up on YouTube. Back to the story. He to push that wood. Sean White. Um, he's become known for doing the half pipe, of course, but he was originally... A pro skateboard. That's a fact of life. He met Tony Hawk at a local skate park when he was nine. Didn't know that, but I'll take it he as a fact. He friended him. Tony Hawk was his personal mentor. 
Right. And I know that they've been together a long time. Yeah, and so he's, he went pro in skateboarding when he was 17. Sean White's the first guy to ever win both the summer and winter X Games Facts. in different sports. So if there's anybody who could pull this off in the summer and winter Olympics, it's probably him. And honestly, I really enjoy watching him, so I would like to see him do some, some skateboard tricks. He's going to get tricks. smoked in skateboarding it, It's. I mean, yeah, he's going to be 33 years old. He's not like, even going to qualify for the Olympics, but it's a it's, great goal to have. Yeah, I mean, he, I, I believe his plan like is to start training after these Winter Olympics are over, so we'll see. No, we'll see. I'm a look. look. I like Sean White. I believed, I've always been a fan of him. So. I believed he could win the gold this time. I believe he can at least make it to the Olympics in, in 2020. I be- Skateboarding's a whole nother field. It is, it's a whole but he's piece. already proven himself at it. And granted, he's older, yes. but... He was older for snowboarding too, and he still won. Yeah, that's because they it was rigged. We'll see. It wasn't it was rigged. Uh, yeah. Snowboarding is scripted. Well, you didn't see. It was all American judges. Of course, they were going to give him the score. Was it all American? There was judges? no Russian there. There was no South Korean there. There was no. I don't know if that's. I don't know if that's accurate. I think you're just German making this there. Up. I don't know either. I just, <laughs> <laughs> I just thought I was something. So that's the Olympic. Oh, also, um, our hockey team lost to. Slovenia Ugh. yesterday um they were up by two goals in the third uh period which is a lot in hockey yes. um and then they lost in overtime but that doesn't torpedo their chances for a medal still actually get a they point can, and everything yeah they can still get a gold medal it's just it's just yeah, more difficult out. at this point and one of the reasons why our team is not so good this year is because the NHL prohibited professional mm-hmm. hockey players from competing in the Olympics but that also does affect other countries like Canada and Russia as well so it's not like we're the only ones at a disadvantage. Yeah. So there's uh, your there's the Olympic there's the Olympic update, update. Burr, 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 or whatever that tune is that they play at the burr, end. Burr, 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 Throwback burr, Thursday. Burr, 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 burr. Let's go over some old sayings. All right. That oh, yeah. used to be some popularity here growing up. <laughs> Remember when people used to say, raise the roof? Oh, yeah. I always thought that was dorky. Raise the roof? <laughs> That's almost like getting lit. Another one was, was lit. Yeah. Tight. Tight. I remember tight. I, I don't remember it actually fading, but you don't really hear people say it that That's much. Thank tight. goodness. Uh, That's lit or that's a vibe. Mm, oh, it's a vibe. Yo, take a chill pill, bro. <laughs> Fortunately, we still do use the root of that phrase, which is chill, like chill or chill out. But, yo, take, but take a, a chill, chill pill. pill. That's a little archaic. <laughs> Faux shizzle. Faux show. <laughs> uh, that one I'm, I'm okay with seeing go. Peace out's on the list, but I, I feel like peace yeah, out still say, vaguely. They, I don't... People say peace, uh, you know, trifling. That's my favorite. Trifling. G Dog, there he is. You want to join? Want no, to join just the conversation to your list because there's so many other things that you say on a daily basis that are so outdated. Well, mine are a little bit. I go like you true go retro to the style, seventies, yeah, sixties. Like, yeah, I like to. Oh, well, let me get you on the horn. Get you on the horn. What was <laughs> the other the well, that thing I said the other day? I say just ducky a lot. Like people, people ask me how I'm doing, I say just ducky. Just ducky. Um, that's one of my favorite things to Is say. Is that an old school saying? I thought that was just a Bill. Original. No, I'm pretty sure it's. I, I mean, I I don't know where I heard it. I don't remember. Why the do first people time say just it. ducky? Because ducks are. You know, I think ducks are just genuinely jolly waterfowl. You know, just, they walk on. Yeah, that's, so you're ducky. I'm ducky. Like ducks, they can so, fly, they can swim, they can do it all. What's the horn mean? Get them on the horn. Like to get the them on phone, the phone. Right? Yeah, I don't know. Maybe because the phone. You know, something like the horn? you probably never experienced. You know, because a lot of today's generation doesn't have a real phone. Rotary we have, phones. We have phones in the office. But you don't really, a lot of people don't have home phones. So something that you don't do, which is so gratifying sometimes, is just like when you're on a phone conversation, you're like, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, Bill. Yeah. What? You want to take vacation at the same time, Scott? That's unacceptable. <laughs> and you oh, slam down the phone. <laughs> what now, a bad man does. <laughs> you can't, oh, you can't do that team. on the iPhone. You can't. No, you, you shatter your screen. What? No, don't do it. Don't no, demonstrate. Yeah. Don't demonstrate, though. You he's a mad, he is. He's a madman. <laughs> Which we got that coming up. Oh, that's a well. nice little tease but, for a second. Yeah, that coming it really up. is. Oh, that yeah. is the no, truth I mean, right there. I think you underestimate how old some of us in this office are because I've definitely – I don't slam the phone down because I try to be considerate of other people's feelings. But I have had <laughs> – Try to phones, watch your volume level, I've had right? I've slammed on me a lot. Well, the volume – I'm being considerate of other people's like, feelings when I'm loud. Can you tell the difference between when somebody is actually slamming the phone, can you hear it? 
Yeah, old school. Like you, there's a, there's a difference between click and so. What is clunk. the what is the uh, comparison now between old school slamming the phone, hanging it up? What do you do now? Just drop the call and yeah, just you just drop the call, and uh, break the wrist, walk away, and then you then you just have the other person. You just hang up on them. Yeah, then you got to check. You, you, you know, you got to look at your phone and be like, did they just hang up on me? Ugh. And then and that's you, how the best summer ever ends. Then you start texting really angrily. Mean. No, no, no. That was that was a whole other story. Uh, that was trifling. that actually did, she was trifling. That did start with a phone call though, and that's how I knew things were wrong. It was like she never freaking call me. What is <laughs> it? Call you call? You can ask if you can come over to my house. What? Usually you would text me. Uh, you were like cool beans. I'm yeah. so stoked <laughs> that my home skillet home is, skillet uh, is, is hella is giving me a call at the crib. Oh my! But bad. it's not fly. Wait, something on this it's list. Coolio. Oh, by the way, this is this list came from PopSugar.com. That's where we compiled it from. Um, one of the things that's on this list that I don't agree with is my bad. I still say my bad all the time. Yeah, I do. A too. lot of people say my bad. Wait, what the heck? It's ten forty-seven. Yeah, okay. Thirteen minutes until eleven o'clock. How do we get into this point right, of the so show? We're gonna we're gonna roll this here. We we're just talking about what a madman does. So Dude. I filmed this video over ten years ago. January was January second, two thousand eighteen. This is vintage. Scott Pink. And it's called What a Madman Does. <laughs> and I might slam a phone in the video. <laughs> uh, you might, yeah. Here it is. Let's... Hello. Hi. <laughs> Scott Pink here from the night show. You know what it is. You want to see what an angry man does when he's mad? This is what an angry man does when he's mad. He opens the door and throws and almost breaks his freaking basketball hoop, all right? And he gets mad, and angry man gets ready. mad. And what's what does he do? Angry man does, angry man punches things. Like that. <laughs> Ow. And angry man gets mad and walks around, punches things. Oh, look how huge that hoodie is. It's enormous. So angry yeah, I can punch this in the face. <laughs> Ow. Let's go punch something else in its face. <laughs> what are we going to punch in the face? Chris does penguin. Hey, money's oh, penguin. No. Here it is. Maybe her boyfriend got it for her. I don't know. Punch it in his <laughs> face. That's what an angry man does. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's it. That's what an angry man does. Punches things. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That's what a madman does. That's some If you get mad, stuff. just punch him in the punch in the face. Punch him in the face like a madman. <laughs> okay, let's just touch on these albums uh, real yeah, quick, yeah. then we out of here for the weekend. All right, so... Uh, what are the ones you, you highlighted? Well, I circled all the ones of artists that I have heard of, like Bell and Sebastian, uh, Escape the Fate, Pop Evil, Senses Fail, and Tyga. Um, Let's go over the album names of them. What are they called? So we got Bell and Sebastian, How to Solve Our Human Problems, Escape the Fate, I Am Human, um, Pop Evil, Pop Evil, Senses Fail, If There Is Light, It Will Find You, and Tyga's album is called Kyoto. Uh, my favorite, though, on this list is Pianos Become the Teeth. That's an artist. Ooh. There's and also, they have a song called, or the album's called Wait for Love, which, I mean, I guess that's what you got to do if your piano is becoming teeth. I'm excited to check out this one called, from a group called Super Chunk, and it's What a Time to Be Alive, <laughs> which is my favorite thing to say <laughs> but right time, now. Let's focus here for a second on the fact that Tyga has an album coming out, and, like, no one is talking about it. Yeah, dude, I, this is, is the first I've heard of this. Does anybody really care that Tyga's putting out an album? Because his last album, like, it went triple plastic. Oh, like all the surgery on Kylie's face. Punch him in the face. <laughs> but do you think, though, so when he was with Kylie, the album didn't succeed. Kylie even like tweeted it, all that stuff, and it, it didn't do well. Will he do better without Kylie this time around, or will he really just go like, go uh, plastic, not I, triple plastic, just plastic. Yeah, I don't. If I were to make a prediction, I would say it's probably not going to do much because Tyga, what he had like one hit, he had like a few one and a half. He had a few. He had like Rack City. He had that. Uh, he had that other song. He was on Deuces with Chris Brown. So he had a few songs that were pretty big. So basically, he did the same thing in the music world as he did in his love life, and he just latched on to other people that were already successful. He used his one, his one. Rack like, City was just Tyga. Yeah, I'm saying he uses one piece of like solo work to kind of glom onto other. Yeah, yeah. So I'm saying, how, how many like, how many good features does he have on this album? I, I guess that basically. Uh, he's going to need a lot of features. Future. 
We're going to tweet out right now, uh, do you care about Tyga's album? And see what you think about it. You should make, I didn't even know he had one coming out, one of the options. No, right. And while Scott types with his Twitter fingers, I will take it upon myself to entertain you because the worst thing you can do is sit in silence and stare at a camera. I will tell you my favorite dad joke that I read on Reddit yesterday. Okay, tell. You know how when you've got some birds flying in a flying V and sometimes one side of the V is longer than the other? Yeah. You know why that is? Why, guy? Because there's more birds in that one. <laughs> uh... <laughs> it's actually not my favorite one. I can't remember what my favorite one was. This is the only one that I remember. Ask Reddit thread yesterday was what is your best dad okay, joke? Okay, so at jams963.com, let us know if you care about the Tyga album that comes out tonight. Let us know. Whew, yes, thanks, yes, I am. I didn't know about it. All right, so Cubicle Show is Monday through Thursday on the Jams Facebook page at 1030 Eastern Time. And though it might be time to wrap up, frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn. Anyway, 1030 Eastern Time, because that's the only time zone that matters. Bye. My bad. One. Cubicle Show. Cubicle Show. Cubicle Show. Cubicle Show! That's what I'm talking about, boy! Bill and Scott Cubicle Show. Yeah? Bill and Scott Cubicle Show. Yeah! Bill and Scott, Bill and Scott Cubicle Show. It's the Bill and Scott, Bill and Scott Cubicle Show. It's the Bill and Scott, Bill and Scott Cubicle Show. It's the Bill and Scott, Bill and Scott Cubicle Show. Cubicle Show. Cubicle Show. Cubicle Show. Cubicle Show. Not a rectangle show. Not a triangle show. Not a pyramid show. It's a cubicle show. Bill and Scott Cubicle Show. Yeah. Bill and Scott Cubicle Show. Yeah. Cubicle.